All right, for our last and final question, what is the number one must-have at a glamping site? I'm gonna say oxygen. You mean you mean like air conditioning? No, not not AC. Oxygen, because if you don't have, if the owners don't supply oxygen, then you you can't you can't go. That's quite possibly the worst answer I've ever heard. Let's talk about what are ten actual must-haves of your glam site, or if you're going to visit one. Flipping choice. It's Garrett from the Nice Flipping Choice channel back again with another glamping video. Now we all have our wants and needs, but what are our must haves in life? No, I'm not talking about your Chick-fil-A addiction. I'm talking about glamping must haves. Now I put together a list that I think is pretty essential and they are designed for owners of campsites and glamp sites, but you might be a guest that's looking to go visit some and looking for things you might need before you go. So these are good questions you can ask your host themselves. Now some might be controversial and I saved some of the most controversial ones for the end so stay tuned for that but you can let me know in the comments below what you actually think about it so without further ado let's shake and bake now i don't go in order from most importance to least importance or anything like that they're kind of just random as i put them together and thought about like oh that's a good one. Oh yeah that's definitely one for sure oh yeah Number one. Number one is a barbecue pit of some type. You're most likely not gonna be in walking or driving range that's convenience of any kind of grocery store or food, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, at least probably 15 to 30 minutes. I recommend don't going much further than that. Now, you may not even have a big kitchen in your place, or you may not even have a kitchen, but providing some type of barbecue pit, whether it's gas or charcoal, that's up for you barbecue aficionados to decide on. Having something there for your guests to be able to actually even cook on besides even what's inside is going to be a big relief for them and they'll be able to really enjoy the outdoor space. Number two, games of some sort. Outdoor games and indoor games. I'm talking Uno. I'm talking Cornhole. I'm talking Piggly Wiggly. I'm talking anything you can really find your hands on and get and allow for guests to be, you know, have more enjoyment and build memories with their families or, you know, whoever they're out there with or if they're by themselves. Yeah! I have made fire! Number three, bug spray. I say you gotta at least provide one can, maybe small cans or something like that, because guests are gonna be miserable and blame you for all the bugs out there. You don't want this trip to be ruined by anything that you can kind of have a little bit of control on. Number four kind of ties into the first one still, and I kind of touched on a little bit. I say you should provide some type of gas or firewood. Don't make them bring their own propane tank. Don't make them go scouring for whatever kind of firewood they can fight, because starting fires is, is oh so easy, as we all know. So that also should tell you to provide Provide some type of kindling maybe with it. You know, don't go shooting the messenger over this. You can apply it if you want. I just think these are all things that really can up your guest reviews and up your guest experience. And a lot of them, you can decide on which cost may be a good one to implement into your business. Number five, String lights, particularly solar lights, if you're off grid all the way. If you have electric abilities, then you can obviously change this to get electrical string lights. But some type of string lights is pretty much an essential thing. They're pretty cheap overall. You can get the kits for 20 to 30 bucks and you can get about 40 feet of string light for 40 to 50 bucks most of the time off Amazon. They're very easy to DIY, put up yourself as well. But guests love them, they make for great pictures and they make for good lighting at nighttime that isn't anything too bright and is hard to hook up. Now number six is some type of luxury bed. Do not cheap out on this, I promise. Get a Tempur-Pedic, get something nice. You can avoid probably the big box stores for the you know mattress and a box sites that are out there. I like Bear, I like Zenus, I like Purple. There's a lot of them out there that have really good reviews and a lot of them have return policies which which stuff in a mattress back in a box seems pretty complicated i love bear i've tried those a lot and i love Zenus. those are the two i have in my properties and they're really kind of affordable especially Zenus is a little cheaper than the bear route both great quality products don't skimp out on this you'll get a lot of really good reviews and this is one of the big things that's a definition of making camping go to glamping now it's time to start stirring the pot it's time to set it off. It's time for some controversial ones. We got four of them left. I'm gonna go from least to most controversial of it. We're starting with number seven. You gotta have some type of AC or heating unit. Now, I know a lot of you might be looking at off-grid. I know a lot of you might have off-grid. This is where it's gonna get tougher, and I promise this is gonna be the one thing that really can drive up your ability to create money year-round, is having some type of structure that you can get AC and heating. Now, there are different levels of this, and if you're off-grid, it's probably gonna be a lot harder to to find these type of units, but I strongly suggest that you figure out some type of way to make sure there's AC and heat within your unit. Most likely you aren't in a climate that doesn't have at least four to five plus months 
with some type of terrible weather, whether it's hot or cold. Now, if you're off grid or you're looking for more of a budget friendly kind of style stay, you can use some type of cheap air method that you figure out. You can probably find some battery powered fans, solar powered fans. You're gonna have to figure out as much as you can for the cooling side, especially if you're in a hotter climate. Now, if you have electrical, I recommend getting a mini split because this is gonna service a lot of your needs within it. Depends how big your dome is, what size you need. Find a good HVAC professional in your area because you'll need them. If anything goes out, that's gonna be one of your biggest refunds you have to make. You're probably gonna lose the whole stay. Now, if you're on the heating side off grid, it's probably a little easier to keep it warm with some type of wood stove that has it exhausting out of somewhere of the tent. Don't do that inside. This should help keep it pretty warm. You can do a few different things with this. I don't recommend space heaters because they are a fire hazard. Do whatever you want there, but I've just heard a lot of horror stories with space heaters involved with them. And if you have electrical, then you can also use a mini split for this. It will take care of the heating portion as well. Now the eighth one and still pretty controversial as well too, is some type of hot water source. Now, once again, if you're off grid, this already makes things a little more difficult, but if you have some type of ability to have an outdoor shower with a, a propane heated water tank, if you have no electric, I don't know of any solar water heaters, but there might be some out there that you're able to figure out as well. If you do have electricity and you probably already accounted for an electric water heater. Now, number nine, we're starting to get to the top. I think you need some form of hot tub out there, or it could be an ice bath of sorts. There's much cheaper versions of this. I've seen people build different types of stands for, for very low, a few hundred bucks. And then also you can obviously go up into the thousands and thousands there. I think this is a really big feature to get guests outside and really enjoy it as well. You can have a hot tub and provide ice if they want to have it during the cool months and wonder what are you going to do with a hot tub during the summer? Well, you can turn it off and use it as an actual just cocktail tub and just change out the water consistently. Number 10, I already know people are going to be in the comments saying, why would you go to the forest and be worried about this? I think you need some form of Wi-Fi. I know it's probably tough. I've been dealing with it myself. I just got Starlink for RV and put it out there at the campsite. It's working amazing. You do need an electric source out there. So if you're solar and off grid, I understand if you don't have it, you've already are kind of going further into that boundary. But if you are providing a luxury glamping site, there's probably gotta be some form of Wi-Fi there. It isn't essential. I'm not gonna say that for sure. I really just kind of clickbaited you to stay to the end of the video, but I think it's pretty important. I think there are a couple options coming out there that are gonna be make it worth it. I had to give it a shot though, because my internet that's within this house will not reach out there. And even so, the internet in here is about as fast as the post office at lunchtime. So it wasn't gonna help anybody, it barely helps me. Starlink's helping a lot in here already. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it works for my guests. Now I'm not saying go make sure you have all these. You can consider these before you're doing your glam site, or if you don't have any of these, maybe add them slowly as income comes in. It all depends on your budget and what your vision is for the project. I just think all of these can add a lot of value, especially for the money you're probably spending on them. The ROI is probably pretty high for most of these that I listed. So think about these before you start your glamping or your campsite, same difference really, or for the next time you're going out glamping or camping yourself. So I gotta go practice my trivia because that was a failure. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace. 